What is going on all you GBA fans? My name is Under the Radar and welcome back to the week three pregame predictions. And of course, I'm not alone. I have with me Sam Fufu. How you doing, man? I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Okay, so as you guys know, we did not have an episode last week. I had a lot of personal stuff going on. It's I do apologize, but this will be back every single week, I promise. It, it just, personal stuff happened. But let's go ahead and jump right into the first game of the week, and we have the Buffalo Bills versus the Miami Dolphinions. And do you want to go ahead and uh, cover the start of this one or any of your thoughts? Sure. So uh, we've seen the Bills do pretty well so far. They had a very dominant first week. Um, which, yeah, the Ute vault turn call worked really well. We had pinned these guys to do quite well, um, and the Dolphinions, on the flip side, have struggled a bit to get started. Um, I think that this matchup is probably going to be quite tricky for the Dolphinions, really. Um, they don't have too much to deal with the sand and the excad drill, although they do have a lot of priority going for them, which could help out. Um, but again, the Vault Turn Core is very good. Um, the right to really is its only stop to Vault Turn, well, the Vault Switch. Um, so I don't think that that's really going to work out too well. Oh, they do have the Nider King as well. Um, but I think. But even that, then, that doesn't want to take Hidden Power Ices and no. things like that. Yeah, Nider King is not the bulkiest of things. And especially if Azelf is part of the Vault Turn Core. Um, I just think the Vault Turn is very strong against the Dolphinions. They do have fast things that can come in and revenge and also Sylveon is pretty bulky and is able to take on oh it's able to take the vault switches and new turns quite well but obviously then they can the bills can just go into a threat to threaten out the Sylveon so I think it's going to be tough for the Dol Dolphinions to pull through in this week do you do you think that they have any tools in their arsenal that can threaten the bills um honestly if I'm being completely honest Yes, I think that they do. I think that one would look at the matchup and be like, okay, Excadrill just does so much work. It does work against Weavile, Archaeops, Mega Metacham. Like, just go down the list. It just does mm. so much work. However, if he wants to run like a defensive hit on top with like Mock Punch, yeah. like that could do some decent work to the Excadrill, Revenge it. And he also has Nido King, which can do a decent amount of damage to like his walls, which are Hippowdon. Uh, I'm sure. Hariyama doesn't want to take Earth powers. Like there's, it need, need a, can you actually get superpower, which is uh, it could run a really good wall breaking set specifically for the builds there. If uh, yeah, if it's brought like that, like especially for Umbreon, like there's so yeah. much that this thing could do to just hurt the Bills team. And also, I think that Dragonite actually would be a very good matchup in this specific battle, yeah. just because it could be a very good revenge killer or stop to the Volt Turn Core. Like, uh, say he, like, Thunderbolt something and it dies, and then he wants to Volt Switch out. Well, he can't because there's a Bandit ESP that's going to do a lot of damage and potentially mm -hmm. KO something. So I think that would be very good. I think that if Hardy plays smart and thinks of long game, I definitely think he has a chance. However, the Bills have just been playing so well this season. It's yeah. it's really impressive, and I love the way he's been playing. Yeah, I think even with the loss last week, uh, the he, his performance was still very good, and I feel like yeah. that yeah, um, McCarty is on form. Hardy is going to struggle this week. So yeah. So in terms of scoreline, um, I honestly think that if he doesn't bring defensive hitman top, I think that the Bills are going to win four zero. Honestly, I think that they're going to win four zero. Yeah, I I have to agree. And even with defensive hit on top, if Crobat's part of the Vault Turn Core, that's not going to work too well. So I'd have to say I was thinking 4-0 as well, actually. I'm going to say Hardy's going to maybe get a couple of kills and do a bit better than he has been doing. But um, I, I think the Bills really are on form and are going to be hard to beat. Yeah. Who do you think the MVP would be? I think that the MVP will probably be, uh, let's say, Crobat. I think Crobat is looking... You really cannot good. steal my answers like that. You <laughs> cannot steal my answers. I don't, like, I don't like that. Yeah. But Crobat actually does a lot of work. Like, it can outspeed his entire team. Yeah. And it does, like, 
Brave Bird Oko's Mega Medicham. It does a lot to him on top. The only thing that really puts a stop to it is Rotom Wash. So I could definitely see yeah. Crobat I'm, being the MVP we of this viol- match. We Voltex with Ice Shard, I suppose, as well. But yeah. Yeah. But, it, just, it just all depends on the spread that he's running, mm-hmm. I guess. But, but yeah. yeah, I could definitely see Crobat being the MVP. Mm-hmm. Okay, do you want to go ahead and move on to the next one? Yeah, let's do the next one. So that will be the Arcaninas versus the Shelmets. And this one is one I'm really looking forward to. I have to give it to Gassy, uh, leader, the coach of the Shelmets. He has been putting in work. Um, this guy has had got some bad press initially, and he has really proved the non-believers wrong. His team is working like a dream at the moment. Um, I, it's been really, it's been really good to see actually. I think in this matchup, it's going to be a tough one both ways. They both have very scary threats. Manaphy really puts in the work against Georgia's team. He doesn't have too many amazing stops to it other than Zapdos checking it. But um, yeah, Manaphy's looking really strong here. Um, I think on Georgia's team, he does have a number of threats and I think Landorus is looking terrifying for the Shelmets too. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting to see what comes out. I think they both it's going to be quite offensive this match. I don't see either of them being able to bring bulkier teams. I think it's going to be see, fast-paced. I thought the exact opposite. I thought it was going to be a very slow-paced, stally battle between like Zapdos and Milotic and like Shaman. However, I do think that like offensive Arcanine puts in a decent amount of work this match. Like uh, mm. between Wild Charge, Flare Blitz, and Crunch, it hits a lot super effectively. The only thing that really doesn't want to like could take it on decently, I would say, is like Garchomp. Yeah, you know, like like there's not a whole lot that wants to take it on. The Mega, one thing that Mega really Amphi impresses could, Mega Amphi could Oh yeah, definitely. yeah. Mega yeah. Ampharos can take on basically any offensive threat. Like that's just the thing. Yeah. I don't see Mega Scizor doing a whole lot of work this match, which is mm. which is really nice to see because it's a really good Mega to kind of envision something not doing well. Yeah, but uh, I think there's I a think couple. That, I think that Mega Scizor will still be important though because. Gassy oh, will yeah. have to prepare for it, even if it's not going to be brought or not do very much. Gassy will have to put the hidden power fire on things, and so it still will be doing work, even if it's not brought to the battle, which is the power of Mega Scizor. Yep. Now, see, the reason why I think that it'll be really bulky is there are, there are Pokemon on Gassy's team, like Garchomp, Rocky Helmet, Rough Skin, does a lot. With Fire Blast, does a lot to Mega Scizor. If he wants to run defensive Ampharos to take on, or especially defensive to like eat up Ice Beams from Milotic, and then that could take that on. I could mm-hmm. see him bringing like defensive Reuniclus to take something, or uh, especially defensive like Shaman. Like I could just see so many defensive Mons that would be good on both sides, like Milotic, bulky Mega Scizor, bulky Arcanine. Even uh-huh. bulky Shaman does a decent amount of work, so I could definitely see this being a bulky, slow-paced battle. And that's kind of the battle that I'm hoping to see. I'd, I'd so. quite like to see a fast-paced one. I th- I'd like to see uh, Gassy and the Shelmets bring a really offensive team because I think that they could keep the pressure on the Arcaniners and that would be really interesting to see how George deals with that. Um, but yeah, it's I, I as you say, it's interesting that we can <laughs> have completely different ideas for this one. But yeah. I would quite like to see the offensive Shelmets. Who do you think will win though i think the arcaniners will win i do think the arcaniners will win <sighs> oh i gotta go with gassy he's really? been impressing me so much this entire season i have to go with gassy even though i honestly think he doesn't have the best team matchup mm. but he is he has the know-how of the game like to win to make plays when he needs to yeah and i think that will actually come in handy against george but i think that gassy is gonna win i think he might win honestly just 2-0 Maybe even 1-0. Mm. 2-0. I think 2-0. 2-0. It'll be a very close game. Yeah. I was going to say 1-0 Arcaninas. I think it, I, it's going to be a really exciting and close game. And what I'm looking forward to is both of these guys are ready to bring surprises. George has some crazy sets up his sleeve. And the Shelmets can really pl- yeah, pull some interesting sets. So, so uh, obviously there's, there's a lot to be seen with this match. I have no idea what's going to happen. Definitely. I'm I'm most excited for this match out of all four of them this week. Yeah. So, uh, which do you think will be 
MVP? <sighs> um, I think that I think that Landers will be MVP. That's what because... I was gonna say. Yeah, I it's think... it's just such a powerhouse. In it's this match. such a powerhouse. It takes on pretty much. It can it can really put in the work against Gassi's team. A lot of the walls just succumb to Landers' eye. Yeah, I really like Landers' matchup in this one. Mm. But uh, you want to go ahead and uh, move on to the next one? You mind if I go first? Yeah, sure, yeah. All right, so we have the Houston Gastros versus the Washington Blazikins. Baby Nick versus Mikey. I'm so excited for this match because we have two winless teams, which sadly one of them has to go 0-3. However, I think this is a match that is much, much closer than... Or a, or a matchup that is much closer than the past games would have you believe. I think that they both could do extremely well this match. And I think that the team matchup is kind of kind of sort of even. I don't think there's any really one thing on one person's team that just says, okay, what does he have for this? Like, for mm-hmm. example, Mammo Swine, what does he have for that? Well, Suicune. Suicune Freak yeah. is dry. It's like that, it doesn't hurt that much. Mm-hmm. Like Raikou, Gastrodon. There's, not, there's no apparent team matchup, and I yeah. love that. I think this will be a very, very good game. And especially if Mike keeps playing the way he has been playing, I think he might have another very, very, very close either win or loss, which Mike has been impressing me a lot. Mm. Really, really impressing me. Yeah, I think for both of us, we see the potential in both teams. And I and it is unfortunate that they haven't got any wins left. And as you say, it's unfortunate that one of them will go 0-3. But it's also a positive that one of them will go 1-2. So, um Exactly. I, I it is going to be interesting. I think with Nick, uh, it, it's been a bit unfortunate with some of his plays. I think that his his play style is very different to mine, so I wouldn't know how to play his team. It's very offensive, and he seems to like keeping the pressure on, but he doesn't seem to have switches a lot of the time for threats on the opponent's team. Um, so I I wouldn't I don't really see what he's going to bring in this match, but I would have I would guess he's going to go quite offensive because that seems to be his play style. The Gastros do have the walls. Suicune is a really great matchup against the Blazikens. The only thing it has to really watch out for is the Mega Venusaur and also maybe uh, spe- powerful special attackers like Alakazam, Mainectric. Um, but I think yeah, the Gastros have things to deal with it. I think Mikey has as you say, been really impressive and both weeks I think he's played really well he's brought a good team, played really well maybe, first week I thought George just played outstandingly and so that's why he won there, last week maybe he made a couple of misplays but the the team prep seems on point um, definitely, it's, it's going to be a close one, it's going to be an interesting one um, one thing that I do notice about the Blazikins playstyle is like you said earlier, they, they don't have switch-ins a lot of time and mm. I think that's because I think he's very carefree with his walls. Like last week, staying in with Thunderbolt with yeah, Stormry on a Latias. Yeah. Like, even though Thunderbolt isn't common, it's like this is league format, you have to be expecting that. Yeah. And I think and I think that honestly, the like the carefreeness with his walls, I think that might be why he's not seeing mm. the success that I think he should be seeing. Yeah. So I think if he if he protects his walls a little more this week, like, for example, if he saves Skarmory to take on Mega Aerodactyl or saves Mega Venusaur to take on, say, like, Suicune or Raikou or things like that, I think it, mm. he could really see a lot more yeah. success with his team. I agree. I think he needs to take it a bit slower, scout a bit more, get the team synergy there. He does have good team synergy, but he just needs Very to bulk good. out. He's been he brought choice banded Entei where maybe a bulkier variant uh, maybe not in the last matchup but he just it seemed like he was struggling to find switches for certain mons and um if he just brought one more mon that was a bit bulkier to take the hits and add to the synergy then uh I think we could see a good result for Nick there but I one don't... other th- yeah, oh, go I'm on. sorry go ahead no, you go ahead you go ahead one other thing I kind of noticed is that he has he has a very offensive team, like you said, like it's fast paced at the same time, it's slow. And I think mm. if he went in went in with the mindset of slow and controlling the battle yeah. instead of putting on pressure yeah. with the battle, I think he could have a lot more success. Like for example, forcing his opponent to bring this in and you know it's obvious. So I think I think that's the way he could go. Like mm. like if he has Kofagrigus, all he has to do is 
set up a toxic spike that forces switches that makes other pokemon come in that you can predict easier like there, there's so many things that this team could do to control a battle yeah that i think nick could do very very well with his play style mm. but i think if he realizes this and he like goes along with it i think he'll he'll have a massive turnaround this season yeah so who do you think is going to win oh my god this is rough um it's hard um, again, I want to say Mikey, but I'm going to give it to Nick because I think after the two losses, I think he's actually realized what his team and his play style is with his team. And I think that he'll turn it around this match. However, I think it'll be a very, very close, like maybe one Oh match. Okay. I'm going to say that I, I think Nick is going to take this again, um, but he has to change up the playstyle a little bit he has to take it slower if he doesn't do that i see the gastros keeping momentum being able to handle the threats and um with the great coverage options they have i think that um they could overwhelm it so nick on the condition that he takes it a bit slower scouts a bit more i think he could do it um and i'm gonna say a 2-0 one thing I think that we both overlooked, though, is Mega Aerodactyl has a pretty decent matchup this game. It outspeeds mm. the entire team and gets super effective on basically everything. Yeah. So I think, uh, actually, going into that, I think that the MVP is going to be Mega yeah. Aerodactyl mm, for yeah. that reason, and I think it'll be fantastic. Fair enough. I think th- that uh, the Blazekins do have enough options. They've got Skarm, even though it, there are super effective hits from Mer- Mega Aero, it can probably take them. And then also uh, Gastrodon probably takes it on quite well. I Gastrodon count, does take so. it on extremely yeah. well. Um, and then he's also got uh, checks to it, like Ice Shard, Mammoth Swine, and potential Bullet Punch, Lucario, things like that. So I think there are checks to it. I wouldn't say Mega Aerodactyl is going to be MVP. I want to say Mega Venusaur is going to be MVP. I think Ooh. they could really put in the work here. That's interesting. Looking at the other team with like Mew and Togekiss, like if he sets up a nasty plot, Aeroslash is going to do a lot. I think yeah. that's a very interesting choice. I think, but I think that um, Nick's going to go offensive Venusaur because he wants the power Ooh. to kill Suicune. So I think Mega Venusaur is actually going to be his... Uh, so we can check potentially. So I think it's going to be powerful. Nice. It will be able to sludge bomb toga kisses and things. Uh, I think it, yeah, it could be pretty good. That'll be very nice to see. I'm excited for this match too. Mm-hmm. Okay, you want to go ahead into the next one? Yeah. So the, you want to go? Yeah, the final matchup, which is the Stantlers versus Staraptors, and uh, again, a really interesting matchup. The Staraptors. Uh, coached by Gearheart have been really impressing me in that I I didn't necessarily think he would go 2-0 straight away that is pretty impressive um, I and yeah he's just been playing very solidly the Stantlers I think have also been playing very well they had a rough first week against the Bills where they just weren't really prepared for the vault turn core but I think uh, they really pulled it back last week against Nick and the Blazikens um, so this week against the Staraptors, they have some a, a decent matchup. The issue being that Victini is a huge problem, and there aren't really great switches. There are things that can check it, but I think Victini is going to be a huge problem. Um, they do have threats against the Staraptors, like Latias is actually very powerful, and yeah, it could be a huge threat. But I I think that Victini is going to be very tricky to stop in this match what do you think at, at the same time i think that rose raid is going to be extremely hard to take on for uh for gearheart i think victini is going to be amazing but i don't want to talk about that since you just did i'm going to talk mm. about rose raid because rose raid hits so much for so much damage like yeah. sludge bomb and giga drain do a lot to his team and then you add on something like technician hp fire and then uh extra sensory yeah. It hits a lot and it hits hard too. Like there're not a lot of switch ins. Mm. I would so I, I would go Leaf Storm over Giga Drain as well just for the power. Yeah, I'm I don't know. I have bad luck with low accuracy moves even if it's like <laughs> That's not even low accuracy. Oh no. It is if it's less than 100%, okay? <laughs> 
but I really, really like the team matchup because there's yeah. one thing on each and like each team that can do a lot of work. Mm. So I, I'm really looking forward to this match. And I really, Ellie really impressed me last week mm. with the way she played. I really like the way that she went into the match, yeah. trying to like catch surprises. Yeah. And I also think that if she team builds the way she team builded last week. Yeah. Uh, by the way, she brought Scarf Scissor. Yeah. Uh, it just <laughs> like strange stuff like that. I think could really catch Gearheart off guard, yeah. and I'm really looking forward to that. Something I think is worth mentioning, but I think is always overhyped, is the matchup of Megalopony against Mega Sableye. Everyone says, "Oh, the team with Megalopony is automatically going to win because Mega Sableye can't take it on." I think that's obviously a ridiculous argument because Mega Sableye might not even be coming. Um, <laughs> but I think that Lopony does actually put in a lot of work against Ellie's team. And I, it will be interesting to see what her strategy is to try and take it on. We might be seeing uh, Floor just try and take it on. I think that could definitely work, although I haven't done return calcs. Um, but Maybe the, defensive Latias? That yeah, defensive Latias could definitely be a thing. The issue is I think Latias is quite nice as a speedy Pokemon. I would potentially expect it to be Scarfed here. Uh, like, Crocodile could try and revenge it, obviously, but... Uh, Scarf Latias could be a nice check to a Dragon Dance Salamence. It can also uh, Psyshock Tentacle and stuff. So, But then uh, Registeel is an easy switch, and so maybe Ellie will opt to do something different with it. I don't know. The one good thing I like about Ellie's team is there are a lot of teams that are just very weak to electric spam. And like mm. most league formats, there aren't many in the GBA D League, which makes me really happy. But the mm. fact that Jolteon can't just bolt switch freely and can't just spam Thunderbolt and tack on an HP move and just do so much work that that's really good team building or like draft drafting on uh, Ellie's part. I, I don't same... know. I think it, I think Jolteon could have a field day. Sand Slash is unlikely to come, so there aren't many. I just don't have anything else that will be. Will be See, able to I was stop that. I was thinking like uh, like Heliolisk, Florges. Uh, Latias and then Scizor and yeah. then even uh, defensive Rosary, especially defensive Rosary. Well, Rose yeah, yeah. There were, it doesn't do much damage to every, anything. But if the Staraptors manage to get up rocks and then are able to just Volt Switch around, um, even though the Volt Switch is not doing much damage, if it's forcing switches, then it's doing the job. Um, I, it will be interesting to see if Jolteon does come. As you say, it probably won't be doing too much damage, and it might not be forcing the switches because it's not going to be doing enough damage. But at the same time, it's fast. It does outspeed the whole team, and there's nothing that's really going to be immune to the Volt Switch. So I don't know if it'll come yeah. on. But I think this will be a fantastic match, and I'm looking forward to this one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this one, it might not be as action-packed, but I think it'll still be very exciting, and I think it'll be interesting to see the winner. Mm-hmm. Which will be? Um, I'm going to say uh, the Stantlers. I'm going to say the Stantlers. I think that Ellie's shown that she can do the team building really well. And against the Staraptors that have some very strong defensive Pokemon, I think if she can find a way around those, she'll be able to take care of the offensive Pokemon quite easily. Um, so... I'd say Ellie, as long as she puts in the work and is able to break down those walls, which I think she will be able to do. Yeah, I'm... See, I'm kind of torn. I want to say Ellie just because of how amazing she's done, mm. but I also kind of want to say Gearhart because while he does have two wins against two people that are both winless, but like you said earlier, one of them is a 5-0 win. Like, that's nothing to yeah. take away from him. And he's also been doing really well. So I think I want to say Gearheart. And actually, I'm going to say Gearheart. I think he's mm. going to pull some crazy trick, and I think he's going to do really well this match. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually going to – I think he might actually have a decent-sized win, like a like a 3-0 win, to be honest. Okay. But... I'm going to say 1-0 uh, in Ellie's favour. I think that Ellie plays safe, which I am an advocate of, because the win is far more important than differential. If you go for differential and then end up losing, then that's far worse. I think Ellie is sensible and go makes sure that she wins, even if that means that she loses out a little bit on differential. Um, so I'm going to say 1-0 Ellie. So what do you think is going to be MVP? Um... I actually think that Crocodile is going to be the MVP this mm. match because I think I think if he 
you can do a couple of weird things with it. If he makes it like a defensive pursuit trapper, mm. it could do a lot of damage to a lot of Hermans. Yeah. And I think it's kind of overlooked a little bit in this matchup. But whenever you think of like pursuit, EQ, and like stealth rocks, there's that puts on a lot of pressure and I think it could do a lot of work. And I think it might be an underrated or a sleeper MVP, but I think it could definitely be an MVP. Yeah, I can see that. Um, we've mentioned Victini and we've mentioned Roserade, which I think are both great. Um, and I think that I would probably have to go with one of them. I also like Florges in them, this matchup a lot, but obviously Registeel is a thing, so I don't think I'm going to give it to that. I, I, I want to see Roserade do things. I drafted it in the D-League Season 1. I really enjoyed using it, and it never it never disappointed. It was one of the ones that always did really well. So I want to see Roserade do a lot of work. That'd be really cool. Mm. Well, with that, that is all four matches this week. Is there anything else that you would like to add about any of the matches before we go? Um, I don't think so. I think we've covered everything. But as always, if you disagree with any of our predictions, please let us know in the comment section below. We we really would like to see what you guys think too. Yeah, I love I love reading comments about people's predictions. I think that's the most interesting part of league format is like underrated people that just win. I think it's awesome. Mm. But. With that, I think we're going to go ahead and get on out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you could, leave a like for us. Leave a comment. That's awesome. Make sure that you go check out all of the links to the D2 channels down below. Make sure you support your favorite team. And with that, I think we're going to head on out. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Bye.